are to be measured strictly in observable quantities. <laughs> we should need a strange new quantum ethics. <laughs> It'd be a place in heaven for me. And another one, the, the SS man that I met on my way home from Heigerlach. It was the end of my war. The Allied troops were closing in. There was, there was nothing more we could do. Elizabeth and the children had taken refuge in a little village in Bavaria, so I had to see them before I was captured. I had to go by bicycle. There was no trains or road transports by that time. And I had to travel by night and sleep under a hedge by day because all through the daylight hours, the skies were full of allied planes, scouring the roads for anything that moved. Men on a bicycle would have been the biggest target left in Germany. Three days and three nights I traveled out of Württemberg and then down to the Schwabian Jura, to the first foothills of the Alps, across my ruined homeland. Was this, was this what I had chosen for it? This, this endless rubble, this perpetual smoke in the sky, these, these hungry faces, was this my doing? And all of the desperate people on the roads, and the most desperate of all were the SS, bands of fanatics with nothing left to lose, roaming around, shooting deserters out of hand hanging them from roadside trees. And that second night, there it is, the terrible, familiar black tunic emerging from the twilight in front of me. And on his lips, as I stop, the one terrible, familiar word, deserter. he says. Sounds as exhausted as I am. I hand him the travel order that I've written for myself, but there's, there's hardly enough light in the sky to read by, and he's too weary to bother. So he reaches for his holster instead. He's going to shoot me simply because it's less labor. <laughs> and suddenly I'm, I'm thinking very quickly and clearly. It's like skiing, or that night in Heligoland, or the one in Felled Park, or what comes to my mind this time. It's the pack of American cigarettes I've got in my pocket. And already they're in my hands. I'm holding them out to him. The most desperate solution to a problem yet. And I wait while he stands there looking at me, trying to take it in, trying to think. His left hand on my useless piece of paper and his right hand on the fastening of his holster. In two simple words in large print on the pack. Lucky strike. He closes his holster and he takes my cigarettes instead. It worked. <laughs> it worked. It's like all of the other solutions to all of the other problems for 20 cigarettes. He let me live. On I went, past the weeping children, lost and hungry children, drafted to fight and then abandoned by their commanders, past the starving slave laborers going home to France, Poland, to Estonia, through Gamertingen, Bibrach, Mindelheim, Kaufbeiren, Sean Gow, across my beloved homeland, my ruined and dishonored and beloved homeland. My dear Heisenberg, 